Welcome everybody to this episode of the Women in Technology Spotlight. Today I have with me Natalie Pepp. She is a computer science student at the Technical University of Munich and also an internship program at the Ember. Welcome, Natalie. Hi, Ronke. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for joining and volunteering to be on this interview series. Please, let's kick it off with a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are. Um, so currently I am based in Freising, which is near to Munich, uh, due to my studies at the Technical University. And um, yeah, recently I've joined VMware as an intern in the internship program as my studies are nearing their end in the next year. And um, something about myself that, that I would say is kind of defining who I am is what I've recently read in a book called um, the Renaissance soul, which is basically a, a really cool term, I think, to describe someone who has a wide variety of interests. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's basically who I am. I'm, I'm interested in tech, but then also I, I love to do meditation and yoga. That's something I really enjoy doing. Um, I'm a creative person. I like doing arts and crafts and um, yeah, getting some some time off the screen, mm -hmm. which is something I think a lot of people, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. um, enjoy a lot. Um, I like being out in nature. I like reading this, like this huge pile of books next to my, next to my bed currently. Um, yeah, I think that's a bit who I am. Yes, thank you for that. And I love the term Renaissance soul, uh, Renaissance soul actually, because uh, I think it's so important to understand that in the world, the world we live in, um, we need to have multiple interests, not just focus on one single thing. And uh, there's also a lot of studies that show that people who have a wide range of interests actually are actually better at finding solutions for problems. So since you love to read, I would um, recommend Range by David Epstein. If you haven't read it yet, that would be something that would be quite interesting, I think. No, so I haven't. Um, haven't you haven't heard of it? No, I haven't yet, but... Um... I'll, I'll definitely add it to the, to the um, pile if you yeah. recommend it, yeah. So since you say you have a lot of interests, um, how, did it, how did tech become your main interest or the, the interest you decided to focus on in your studies? Yeah, so that was actually a bit of a long run thing for me because yeah, I, I was always this kind of person. So back in, in high school, I was, doing well in kind of all of the subjects like math and, and science stuff, um, but also languages and, and, and all the different things. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and so I asked a lot of people, I asked around, what do you think I would be good at? What do you think like I could do with my background and my interests? And that's how I ended up studying media studies, media management because a lot of people told me you're so creative like you can you can use this to create campaigns you can use this to to write I actually um chose to have a major in journalism in those studies mm -hmm. but um then what I realized during the course of my studies was that I was always drawn to kind of the technical side of things mm -hmm. like for example when we were designing for a project studies we were designing a campaign for um uh, Facebook advertising for this project and while everyone was like busy creating all the different ads the pictures the text I was more interested in how does it actually work like how does the algorithm decide what it shows people how how is this influenced and that's also a big interest of mine now um, that I am in tech how how do these technology companies influence mm -hmm. what we're seeing and so that was kind of the first glimpse into that. Mm -hmm. And then I was actually studying at the University of Applied Sciences back then. So in your fifth semester, you have to do a, um, a project study where you work in a company, basically an internship. And I didn't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of taking this time to figure out what I wanted to do. And next to my internship, I was actually doing a lot of um, tech classes on the side, like um, online courses that were available. And 
yeah, that, that kind of sparked my interest even more. And then, yeah, when I came back, I talked to my um, uh, now husband. He was actually studying um, information systems at the time. And I was kind of asking him for materials from his studies because I was considering going into computer science, but I was very hesitant mm -hmm. because I think of all the stereotypes that are attached to it. And um, yeah, because I was not that techie person who had always been programming, who mm -hmm. had all of that background. I was just really interested in it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then that interest grew and I talked to a lot of people. Um, and then I decided to be brave and <laughs> take take the plunge. And um, yeah, that's when I decided to actually finish my degree um, and then go for a second one in computer science. Mm -hmm. Well, it's such an interesting combination between language and technology. I'll come back to that a little later. I want to um, dive into what you said about being hesitant to become a computer scientist, which is an interesting thing because I think it relates also to having role models um, that actually, you know, um, show you that you are part of this community. So I was just uh, wondering, your family, is there anyone who is in the tech field or is it, are you the first person to go there? Um, so actually, my dad is also working in technology. He's a consultant. Um, but to me, that was always, I never knew what he really did, you know. I knew it was something to do with computers. And that was about it. I wasn't really drawn to it because I always always thought I'm not I'm not a person that kind of is interested in 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 how to disassemble a computer. I'm not the person that was like programming any games and and even though that was nothing that my dad did to me that was kind of this whole world of mm -hmm. computer science and technology. It was all to do with these things that kind of didn't really sound that sexy, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, That's actually a very important point that you bring up, because I've heard this from so many women, that uh, from the outside, the whole world of technology uh, or computers actually doesn't really sound interesting, because you have no idea what you will be doing. And you described it very aptly that you think about computers and disassembling and someone sitting in front of a computer and you have no clue what they're doing. So this is a very typical story from women that they say they didn't actually have any idea what was going on. So it's um, so so you kind of um, came into the field by chance, like a lot of women. Um, there's a question in, somewhere in the back of my head that's been following throughout your story. And that is, um, what was that? Something, very, we have to take a short cut here because I have, but there was, there was something I wanted to ask you from your story and it's, it's just- Going to come back. Going to come back. Let me just pause here so Fatima can cut the video here. Um, so, Let's go back to the whole thing of the stereotypes you mentioned. Um, what stereotypes did you think about when you thought about computers and computer science and which are the stereotypes that stopped you from embracing it wholeheartedly? So what I think was the most prevalent stereotype was that you would be that person that sits in front of the computer doing some programming all day long mm -hmm. and that's about it that's your job for the next however many years and to be honest that still to this day would be my personal nightmare <laughs> but what I've learned is that technology and the technology field is so much more than just these mm -hmm. roles um, of course they exist but even if you are a developer that's not your whole day like you that there's so much communication with other people there's so much collaboration between groups um depending on where you are working between groups in different locations and and that's something that i was afraid of i was afraid of to be in this like very lonely field where you just it's you and the computer yeah but um yeah i don't think that's necessarily the case yeah, at all yeah, now that i've seen it 
that actually brings me back to the whole um, language and tech combination that I found so interesting because that's one of the things I think the communication and language skills are so important in tech nowadays because as you said uh, people don't sit in the front of the computer all day alone but they have to communicate and I do think that women are especially skilled in communi communicating and that is why I also feel that solution engineering where you're now interning is one of the best fields for women. Um, I was wondering among those stereotypes you talked about, was there also a gender stereotype that uh, you were thinking of or was it just around the sitting in front of the computer? Um, yeah, I think the, the gender stereotype mostly revolved around the whole, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a boy's thing to fiddle around with computers. It's, it's kind of, and also, yeah, that is kind of a boys club that you would get yourself into. Mm -hmm. And I always felt that I wasn't sure with, um, we talked about a lot of different interests. So I'm not someone whose sole interest is that. And I feel for, um, for boys and men that, that sometimes was, was my impression that they started really, really early on. Mm -hmm. they, they had such a big head start in my mind that I felt that I didn't know how to catch up to that. Mm -hmm. I think that was what I was most afraid of. And then also a bit, that, that came a bit later actually when I started studying, but then when I was looking at opportunities to do working student positions or, or thinking about my career more, I think what then emerged was a bit um, that um, you're always the only one in the room. And you're always, a, like I'm an introverted person, I would say, but you're always <laughs> the one, or even if it's a couple of women, you stick out and that, um, I don't know, there's a bit of a spotlight on you. And sometimes I feel that kind of leads um, you to think that you need to perform more or better than mm -hmm. men just because everyone is looking at you mm -hmm. and um, yeah sometimes that can feel like everyone is judging you and yeah I think that's um, um, in the direction of gender stereotypes I guess. That's actually so accurate. I held a talk at the Women Tech uh, Network conference this uh, year in May, and it was called The Only One in the Room. And it was exactly around those topics, you know, that uh, being a woman in tech, you will experience especially this, this feeling of being scrutinized, of being um, somehow pressured to perform better than the men around you because everything you do will fall back on other women and you're so conspicuous in this crowd of, of men. So yes, this is a valid uh, concern, obviously. And uh, when you then changed into computer science, how did you experience it in reality? How was it? Um, so even when I started, I made sure that I had kind of my support group because that obviously that was my concern that I would be kind of on my own. Mm -hmm. So um, when I joined the computer science faculty at TUM, I also joined the women in computer science group, mm -hmm. which was amazing because they there were so many different people. Like we have a professor who's who was running it. There's um, doctoral candidates. There's students from all different um, different majors that we offer. There's um, bachelor students, master students. And that was really great for me because early on I could actually see like different paths and different um, different backgrounds as well where people were coming from. And that I think really, really motivated me. Like whenever I went on an event that we hosted or something, mm -hmm. I, I came back like buzzing with inspiration and ideas. And so, so I really loved that. And, but then also on the other side, I had that network. And when I started studying, it was really hard for me in the first semesters, especially 
because it had been so long that I was in school, obviously, because of the media studies that I did before. Uh, whenever in the lectures they said, oh, that's something that you learn in school. I was taking notes <laughs> and I knew that I would spend the evening Googling whatever they just said. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was really hard at first to like get into that mindset to like refresh all the memory of yeah. um, the math and, and that. But having that support group really helped me because they also could like um, tell me that it's normal, that everyone kind of goes through these phases where um, where it's not that easy and where you have to work hard, but um, it's not me. It's not me being a woman or anything. It's just the way it is. And that really, really helped me. Um, yeah. And I love how you talk about this, this community because I would like to talk a little bit about the power of community and how important it is on the one hand, seeing other role models because obviously there were students who were already more um, progressed and there was the professor and that's always helpful to see other women who are in certain roles and um, but also um, just having other women around you do you want to to talk a little bit about that what community how important community was for you yeah i'd love to do that because um actually i i just love how we can we can empower each other and lift each other up and give each other opportunities. And like one, one example that I just, I would recommend any woman <laughs> to like do this once in her lifetime would um, be to attend Grace Hopper celebration, mm -hmm. um, which is the, I think biggest um, computer science conference just like focused on women. Mm -hmm. And I was really fortunate because that, that was also something that came from the community at my university. Mm -hmm. They encouraged me in my second bachelor's semester, you know, when you have no idea about anything, basically. They encouraged me to apply to the scholarship they were giving out mm -hmm. um, to attend this conference in the US, which was a really huge, huge thing at the time. I'd never been and I, I didn't know anything about technology conferences. And I, I never thought I'd get the scholarship, but then somehow I did. And, um, and that was because I was encouraged to apply. I didn't even think to apply before. Um, and then I went and it was just amazing. It, like, I think at the time it was about 20,000 um, mm. attendees and they had this huge keynote the first day. And it was just this huge, huge conference hall filled with women who were in technology in in any mm -hmm. shape or form and um it was just great to to um attend all the different kinds of talks and meet these women who were in so many different roles there were women who were in data science there were women who were in product management program management developers you know it, it really helped me to see what's possible and what I could do with that degree, which also helped me to like know what I wanted to do in my studies to um, have this, this, um, this path before me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was just really cool. And I, to this day, I remember some of the stories, like I, I watched a talk about, um, some women working for NASA that explained how to build software for rocket ships because that's obviously like a very specific field and I thought that was so interesting to hear mm -hmm. and yeah yeah I, I loved that experience yeah this is an amaz amazing thing you touched on the just the fact uh, that seeing a lot of women around you is such an empowering experience to see so many women who are also interested in and that's the exact opposite of our daily experience of being the only one in the room and you have all these these other um yeah women who up lift you up somehow so i can definitely also recommend going to these um conferences there are now a couple of others which may be easier to attend because they're not that far away but that uh the grace hopper one is definitely one yeah. you should um try to go to once in a lifetime um so coming back to what you then 
realized you wanted to do, um, or let's maybe even take it a step further because you're now an intern at the Ember. Tell me a little bit about how you got into this internship and what you're doing and, and why you're doing it and how you're experiencing it. Yeah, so um, basically when I started studying computer science, mm -hmm. um, as I said, for the first couple of semesters, I was booked with university, mm -hmm. but then I actually wanted to see how I can apply all of these things. And so I did a couple of different um, internships or working student positions. I um, started out with actually um, someone I met through the Women in Computer Science group. I worked uh, with her on her research. I supported her in that. Mm -hmm. um, but then that was academic work. So I also wanted to see what it's like to work in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And the, the first internship that I did was um, as a software developer, because mm -hmm. that's basically, you know, you're a computer scientist, <laughs> that, that's what you become when you go. Yeah, it's the first to work. iteration. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it was really interesting. I learned a lot, but um, I also realized that I, I couldn't really see myself in that position in the long run, just because... I don't know, I was missing something. And then, um, uh, yeah, I, I did my thesis. I was a bit preoccupied with other things. And then um, actually my husband, he's also in technology. He is a solutions engineer. Um, he sent me this, this advertisement for the internship at VMware. And I thought it was so cool because um, solutions engineering is a really interesting field, but for students, I feel there are not a lot of opportunities for internships in this uh, specific area. Mm -hmm. um, but it had all the things that I really like, you know, um, there was a lot of technology involved. So I wouldn't just do project management or something that kind of just scrape the technology side. Um, mm -hmm. But I could really work uh, with technologies, get to know different technologies. But also in solutions engineering, you have that contact to the customer you really need to try and understand them and their issues and then develop solutions with them um, you have lots of lots of different activities like um, you can design proof of concepts you can present you can um, pitch solutions and so I thought this role <laughs> is just perfect for me because um, and, and what I've learned now that I um, have been working here for a couple of months, what my um, colleagues tell me every time, like no day is like the day before, like mm -hmm. every day is different. There's always new challenges. And I personally really love that because, yeah, I, I, I can see myself doing that for a long time because there's always something new to learn. Yeah. So you touched on everything I personally also like about solution engineering, the fact that every day is different, the fact that you work with technology, but you also have the whole people aspect because you talk to customers and you have the communication and all that in there. And um, there's another aspect to solution engineering, maybe that's the flexibility of the day. So I think as a woman, that's also an aspect, maybe um, how you can shape your day and, and have room for other things as well. Yeah, I actually, I really love that um, about, about this job, this internship that I'm doing now, but I think it extends beyond the internship and even beyond VMware. I think in technology in general, you get a lot of flexibility in your work environment, in your working hours a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just really great because what I think um, is really important and it's important to me is that to do their best work, to put their best efforts forward, people need to work in an environment that kind of really suits them, that they, they can make work for them. Mm -hmm. And in technology, I think that's, that's possible a lot of times to adjust your work environment to your personal <clears throat> working style as well mm -hmm. and yeah I really love that and even right now in my internship it's it's amazing how I can combine this internship with my studies that I'm also doing on the side so um, mm -hmm. because I'm working 20 hours a week so it's part-time and I can 
I can combine this really well because obviously when I have something at university that needs my attention, then I just block my calendar and I'm not working mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. that time. But then I don't have to travel anywhere as well to just switch and work like right after I'm finished with that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really helpful. Upside, yeah. That's the upside of the, also this remote working situation that you can work from home and that you can switch the context from whatever you're doing in this um, part of your life to whatever you're doing in the other part of your life. So talking about, because you talked about um, that uh, working in a situation that suits you best, how are you experiencing your internship at uh, VMware? Are there a lot of other women? Um, what is the atmosphere? What is it like actually to be an intern? Um, actually, I really, really love it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm still on my internship. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, it, it has actually been really, really great so far. It's been very different to anything that I've um, done before in terms of internships mm -hmm. um, in the way that um, it's really it's really allowing me to focus on on um, what I'm interested in. It's really open. Everyone is so open like. I've never experienced it that I can just call the manager of my manager and chat with them on whatever is on my mind and that's possible here or just um, talking to my colleagues everyone is really open and is really willing to show me how they work to answer my questions and at the same time there are so many resources for me to learn and um to learn more about the technologies mm -hmm. um and then also what i really like at vmware are the power of difference groups which are kind of employee resource groups um for all different kinds of um of groups like there's the women um at vmware one there's pride there's um disability there's like there's i think um um localities there's like so many different um, ways to get in touch with people and to learn from people and to see so many different things and that's what I really really love about this internship like that it provides me with so much um, input to grow yeah so that's great I love hearing that you're enjoying your internship obviously I'm at VMware myself I've been here for five years so it's always great to hear it from a different perspective because of course my experience is definitely another one than yours so it's, it's great to see that you have all these opportunity and the chance to actually um, use this this month that you are with us and I do hope that you will consider joining us afterwards <laughs> at some point when you're done with your studies. So coming back to your um, entire journey, when you think back on how your journey for, went from, from something co completely different like journalism to tech, um, what is it you would recommend young women to do if they are looking for a career, not necessarily in tech, but how do you think uh, you should best proceed? So what I think has really helped me throughout any stage of my my educational and career journey is just talking to people mm -hmm. and like really asking them about what is it that they do trying to understand how their day looks like because often I think when you you're coming from the outside and you're looking at this job description mm -hmm. you're just reading this long list of skills but you can't actually really imagine what it is that these people do every day so I would say just ask around just mm -hmm. um, because people tend to be very very open if you just approach them because generally people really like to talk about what, <laughs> what they love in the best case and if they yeah. don't love it then maybe you know <laughs> um, but then that's also good to know yeah you're right yeah, that's a know. very important aspect ask people about the job you're thinking about because um, and I've talked uh, to other women who said the same thing. Um, a job might look completely different from the outside than it actually is. And not just from the job description, also when you just watch people, it might be completely different yeah. when you do it yourself. So that's a very good point. Um, trying to actually do some scoping before you make a decision. Yeah, exactly. And then I think the other thing would just be bold and, and try different things out because um, 
for me often I thought oh no that that's not something that I can do that's not something that I'm qualified for maybe yet or something but then someone once told me that actually you should just apply you should just put yourself out there and then let the others decide if yeah. if you're fit for that position that scholarship that role whatever it is because if you decided for yourself you know you might limit yourself mm -hmm. in your opportunities and I don't know you can just wait you know for others to tell <laughs> you no that's maybe not the right time but then they might see another opportunity that would be right for you you know and mm -hmm just putting yourself out there and and not being shy about what you bring to the table because that that's also something that I've learned everyone can bring something to the table even if you're just starting out you know um you have like a totally different perspective just uh, like you said um earlier you have a different perspective to someone that has been in the industry for a long time yeah that's definitely something I'd recommend That's also a really good point that you just brought up at the end. And that's do not self-reject. That's something a lot of us do. Instead of going and letting other people decide if uh, you can do it or not, you just say, oh, no, I, I won't even um, apply. So, yeah, good point. Ask to people what they are doing. Be bold and don't self-reject. These are three very important recommendations, I think, and tips to, to women coming into the field. So thank you so much, Natalie, for taking the time to talk to me and about your journey and your internships. And it has been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank you um, so much as well. It was a great opportunity um, talking to you and um, yeah, being part of this great format. <laughs>